Welcome to The Extra Dimension, the show where we explore ways technology intersects with other parts of our lives, which we like to call the technological convergence. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today we have a very special episode. You might even call it a Nexus special episode. Back in August 2017, I went to rural Wyoming to see the solar eclipse, and I brought a microphone to document the trip. When we put the episode together, we decided it would best fit into our show Nexus Special, which covers big events, usually technology keynotes. But over the last year, we've gotten a lot of new listeners over here on The Extra Dimension, and I thought that this would be right up your alley. I personally still enjoy going back and listening to the wonder in our voices when the full eclipse reached us. By the way, if you want to jump straight to that moment in the episode, just look for the timestamp in the show notes, which can be found at thenexus.tv slash TED35. This episode is also an exciting milestone because it marks the one-year anniversary of The Extra Dimension being broadcast on Frogtown Community Radio, so shout out to everyone tuning in from here in St. Paul. So, without further delay, let's revisit the solar eclipse 2017. This is an Nexus Special, episode 54, Total Solar Eclipse 2017, on the week of August 21st, 2017. And now, put a sock on it. This Nexus Special is hosted by Ian Arbuck, Ryan Rampersad, and Scott Kopp. All right, Ryan, this was a big week. Huge week. Huge week, yes. On Monday... The 21st of August, there was a solar eclipse that crossed the continental United States. That's right. Huge deal. For several reasons. I mean, one is like that, like going east or west to east across the United States meant that many, 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 many people were able to see it. Specifically, people who uh, media tries to, you know, like talk to right so the media was all over this thing in the months leading up to it as well also known now as the great american eclipse yeah the great american get together um but i mean like total solar eclipses are also a big deal in several other ways for one thing it's just like it's it's a complete fluke that like the moon is the correct size and distance away from the earth to produce these full solar eclipses that for one thing, cover up the sun, but for another thing, don't cover up the corona, right? Which is why we're able to get that spectacular, like, kind of cloud that you see around the uh, the, the sun. Um, and there's actually been quite a bit of scientific, like, observations that people mm-hmm. have been able to do uh, during solar eclipses to, to discover new things. Um, and so, yeah, so if the moon were just, like, a little bit smaller, we wouldn't be able to get total sol- total solar eclipses at all. Um, in the future, you know, when the moon the moon is constantly moving away from the Earth just a little bit by a little bit, right? Yeah, like, so like an like, inch every year. Something like that, yeah. And in like 600,000 years, um, which seems like a long time, but like in the cosmic scale... It's not that long. It's not that long. Like, it'll be too far away for total eclipses to happen at all. So we're like just at this perfect kind of... Time. Yeah, the Goldilocks uh, mm-hmm. time for, for total solar eclipses. Yeah. And that means, you know, a million years ago that you just wouldn't have noticed the yeah. corona or anything. It just nope. would have been so big in the sky that it would have just eclipsed all the time, mm-hmm. potentially. <laughs> Probably not quite all the time. Uh, but... more, than, more than now. Yeah. 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 Um, and as for that science stuff that I mentioned, those observations, um, in the past, being able to see the corona uh, enabled scientists to actually discover things like helium mm-hmm. was first discovered when they were pointing uh, these brand new spec- spectrometers uh, at the corona and they were like wait what's this thing this element that we've never seen before even though helium is like the second most uh, abundant element in the universe um, but that was how they discovered it back in like the 1860s I think interesting yeah um, this year 
what they were hoping to do was make observations on the corona to help us understand like why the corona is so much hotter than the surface of the sun, mm. which is one of those things that has puzzled scientists for a really long time. Um, so I haven't seen any like results from the observations. Could take a doing. while. Yeah, but you know they got to process data and stuff. Mm -hmm. The methods that they were using to do those observations was really freaking cool. They had some like jet planes, like like fighter jet kind of things, uh, flying as fast as they could in the same direction. Oh, to as, keep up with it. Yeah, exactly. That's so that cool. they could get like the full solar eclipse for seven hours instead mm -hmm. of no, maybe seven minutes. Seven minutes that instead of two right. minutes. Yeah. Well, because like the maybe they couldn't keep up with it. No, you, no, you really can't because yeah. like the the shadow is moving at like fast oh, i forget what so so my friend scott who brought me down to wyoming to uh watch the eclipse he did some calculations on on how fast it had to be moving and it, i think it was like 1300 mm. miles per hour or something like yeah. that um so yeah so they they were able to in those jet planes get a, a full seven minutes instead of two it's minutes pretty good yeah 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 we also were able to see uh, Mercury during that eclipse, so they were doing some uh, observations on Mercury that they normally can't do. Um, and it's actually, it's really interesting that even though we've got all these modern instruments and everything, like, the eclipse is still the one and only time that you can do some of these types mm -hmm. of observations. Like, they can't recreate those conditions right. any other way mm -hmm. uh, until we learn how to, like, build ourselves a, an artificial moon, I guess. And Could just happen. Stick it up in the sky wherever we want it. Yep, just there all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So scientists aside, who cares about them, right? Um, Not many the, people, as it turns out. <laughs> the general American populace was really, really excited about this. Well, some of us were anyway. Yeah. So a bunch of people traveled from wherever they live in the United States down towards that line of of totality. Do we have numbers on like? I do not. Okay. Um, I can tell you that. Driving north from like the Denver area towards rural Wyoming was hell. I can tell you that it was similar going to Missouri. Yeah, yeah. And so, how how far away from your final destination did you guys start hitting traffic? So, um, it wasn't the traffic so much as the construction, actually. Oh wow! For us, oh that's poor planning. I mean, it just turns out that 35 is just construction all the way everywhere, <laughs> here or there. Um, but the, the, the real traffic uh, was encountered as soon as we hit Missouri. Because yeah. mm -hmm. that's, that's basically where the totality path would be. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, so our, our plan for our itinerary was um, we flew into Denver the day before the eclipse, um, drove up to Estes Park, which is like a town or kind of a resort town up by Rocky Mountain National Park, and then we got up early. Well, I say early. We woke up at like 6 a.m., right? Sure. Um, to get on the road. Turns out there were people who like hit the road so early that they got to where they wanted to watch the eclipse at like three in the morning. Oh, of course. But yeah, so so we as soon as we got onto Interstate 25 going north, that was when we hit the traffic, which lasted for like four hours or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to give you a sense of how frustrating that car ride was, here is some audio from the day of the eclipse. All right, so it's 6.40 in the morning. We're just finishing up packing. And I opened up Google Maps to take a peek. And Interstate 25 is totally red. Northbound specifically on 25. All the way from, where does it start here, around Mead, Colorado? Oh, crap, almost down to, uh, almost to Denver. Long, yeah, Longmont. Um, oh my gosh, yeah, down into Denver. Yeah, 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 yeah. Holy. But wait, according to this one, it only goes to Cheyenne and then it's green again, which doesn't make any sense. Unless the red is moving north. It probably will be, yeah. Um... So maybe we avoid 25. Let's see what Google Maps there's says. Nothing, there's not a better way. It's like the only way. Oh, no, yeah, it still says that uh, fastest route despite construction on I-25 North causing 26 minute delay. So, so we just got on Interstate 25, uh, what would you say, like 5, 10 minutes ago? Uh, yeah, something like that. It's in Loveland, so we got on in Loveland. Yep. And, of course, right 
there in Loveland, there was construction on I-25, so that was part of the reason that uh, we... Oh, read the sign. <laughs> Heavy traffic expected to Wyoming. Thanks. Because everybody's going there from Colorado to go see the eclipse. Yep. So we have 127 miles to go. Hopefully it won't be long. Oh, away. man. Dude, we just passed a billboard for Cheyenne, Wyoming that said, You're not there yet. <laughs> No kidding. Oh my god. It's like the universe is mocking us. So, we're plodding along on uh, 25. Not doing too bad, actually. When we look over uh, to the right, and on the frontage road, we see a car that definitely was on the highway next to us earlier. Uh, and now he's, he's, uh, he's passed us by getting off of the highway, getting onto the frontage road, and just going as fast as he pleases. So, <laughs> that's one, one strategy. Alright, we are biting the bullet, we're trying out the, uh, strategy of the frontage road, we're getting off the highway, and we looked on the map, and it looks like the frontage road on this side of the highway kind of ends, but if we got off the highway and go to the other side of the highway... Yeah, just go, 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 go. Oh, sh**. <laughs> oh, he ain't going anywhere. Then we can go continue north and it... Oh, yeah. Road, right? Uh... This is dirt. This is it. Yeah, this is the one. This oh. is a freaking dirt road. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, we made a mistake. And you know what? I bet you anything that car that we just cut off is doing the same oh, thing. Oh, my God. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. All right, this time we're doing it. We, uh, we got on the frontage road. It is a dirt road, but we don't care. We are going faster than the cars that are on the highway. So there's the car with the gas tank on his, on his roof. Yep, yep. So we are catching up to the, the people we were behind right when we got off the highway. So, uh, um, the guy in front of us is throwing rocks. Yeah. Yeah, there were quite a few people who were getting off the highway where we got off, but there's also porta potties there. Uh, so I think... A lot of them were using that and not getting on the frontage road. Yeah. So it's an adventure. It is an adventure. We have no and idea we, if this will help or hurt us. We did look ahead on the map just to make sure that there was a way for us to get back on the highway if we need to, uh, and there is, so we're good. Yeah, I'm hoping to see some uh, some familiar yeah, bumpers. Yeah. All right, so we're going 55, and they're going about 50. There's a bunch of porta potties. Oh man. Okay, this would be a perfect place to stop if we were in the path of totality. Oh crap. But we're not far enough oh, north yet. And there's a big truck coming south towards us. Oh. And I've got nowhere to pull over to get a miss him. Ah. Nice. <laughs> a little canyon around the side of the road there. <laughs> there's people sneaking across onto the dirt road. That's not okay. Don't drive across the grass. Just because we've got an eclipse coming doesn't mean that we have to ignore all of the rules. It's not an apocalypse yet, yeah. okay? Yeah. We're not ignoring the rules, so you can't either. Yeah. That's the only way that society holds together. So I'd say that that worked. We, uh, we definitely made wow. progress in terms of where we're at in the, in the, in the That's traffic line. what it looks like now. So we, we were lucky enough to be in a position where we, we, we had a hotel for the night before because after driving all day, you know, mm -hmm. you're, just, you're just exhausted. So we, we had a place to stay. And then we went to a small town that we had pre-planned that was in totality, like right in the middle. Yep. I think it was Marshall or something. Okay. Um, turns out it was cloudy. So we went somewhere else. We went oh. to Houstonia instead, okay. which is about 30 miles away. And it was fine there. Okay. So good, good. Um, but it's interesting, you know, uh, like it's this very narrow band of space you have. Mm -hmm. um, it's like seventy miles, but if you want the full duration, it's much narrower than that even. Yeah. Um, so we we were lucky enough to have sort of a major road to go on to get somewhere else. Yeah. I think it's really it was really fun, like just 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 amazing about how many people there actually were mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. who cared. Uh, on the other hand, uh, maybe where you were, there were probably more people in one place you could see. Uh, all right, so we just got off of 25 at the location of the rest stop. There are tons of people here. 
Uh, it's and crazy It's drama. crazy. Yeah, so I took a video. Um, we might use the audio from that in the podcast. I don't know, but I pl- I'll probably also post that video on YouTube. Um, anyway. So we pulled up to the rest area building. <laughs> Just to see if we could go to the bathroom, even if we weren't going to stay <laughs> here. Nope, that's not... That's that's like a 45-minute long line, looks like. Think about the women's line. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, so, so what our plan is now is we're going to continue on the the highway that you know comes off of that that this is a juncture with right so it goes east yeah so we're going east instead of north so still keep but we made it to the two minute mark yeah yeah Woo! so and, and going, going east brings us farther into the two minute yes. mark so that's good that's good so all these people are parked in the tall weeds, and there's signs everywhere that says fire damage, or fire, fire danger, hazard, fire danger. Don't don't go out. Don't park in the grass. Oh man, somebody's gonna start a fire. And there's winds blowing like crazy. And there's tons of people out here, so we're not gonna like nobody's gonna be able to get out of the area quickly. Oh, this is this is gonna be a disaster. Oh yeah. So we got people pulled off into little side things all over. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, what we're picking here is who are we gonna make friends with? Is yeah. That, this, so, who do we like? Who looks like somebody we'd want to make friends with? Like somebody with a telescope? I don't know. I <laughs> I would feel inadequate around him. <laughs> Such a guy thing. Right. You see anything up ahead that looks good for? I mean, just, like, just look at how thick that that yeah. telescope was. It's all about girth. It is. It really is. Man. How crazy would it be to be, like live up here? Like I've lived up here for my family's been here for five generations, and all of a sudden on August twenty first, two thousand seventeen, there's just packed tons people. of people out here How is on your doorstep. In our original area, we 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 were in a kind of like a parking lot with a huge field next to us, and you know there were probably like, forty five people in that one field. Mm-hmm. But since it was cloudy, we left. But where we ended up going in Houstonia, there was no really nobody. Yeah. So, you know, it kind of just depends. And, and, and in some ways, I think it was really cool that there was enough space for everybody to kind of, you know, be wherever they needed to be. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, man, it would have been really cool to actually have, like, an, a truly absurd, like, you know, dozens of millions of people actually right. somewhere yeah. watching. I, it felt like it felt like a giant convention Yeah. that, you know, nobody had bought tickets for and <laughs> had no planning. Unless somebody did buy tickets. Mm, that's... Aww. Well, I guess your ticket is the uh, the solar glasses. I guess or you're right. So um, I think that would be an interesting thing to talk about a little bit: the eclipse glass issue. Yeah. So everybody bought their eclipse glasses on fill in the blank, maybe Amazon. Sure, I guess. Apparently, there were a ton of uh, like hardware stores and other retailers selling eclipse glasses uh-huh. at some point during the summer before the eclipse. But as we marched up in the weeks here, the last couple of weeks maybe, it was basically impossible to get eclipse right, glasses. Right. Right. But then there was this other big issue on Amazon in particular where there were dozens of counterfeit sellers. Yeah. Um, it's like trying to buy hoverboards kind in of. 2015 or whatever. Yeah. and, yeah. and But, but in, in some ways it's kind of worse because like the hoverboard just won't work. Mm-hmm. But the Eclipse glasses will blind you yeah. if they're fake. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's kind of weird. You know? you know, the funny thing is, is it's, it was actually a lot easier to find... Um, like eclipse uh covers for like Cameras. camera lenses yeah. yeah and as it turns out looking at the partial eclipse through like binoculars which you can fit those mm-hmm. uh camera uh cups over like that is uh, enhances the experience by a lot because you can actually see yeah more mm-hmm. you know when it's magnified much much sharper too so so yeah so if you've got some good Binoculars, I would say just like buy the the cups for those and right. then not bother with the glasses, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Or just stick, you know, hold on to your glasses from this year yeah. and uh, and use them again in 2024. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, absolutely. That's going to be tough, but uh, absolutely. I, I just want to point out how interesting it is. Uh, so, you know, this is uh, Nexus Special and this is a kind of a tech network. And I'm sure. a techie person. Yeah. And um, I think it's interesting how. The eclipse exposed uh, a problem that's sort of rampant on Amazon, which is the forgery and the the fake items. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think maybe I don't think a lot of people knew that Amazon was as rampant with fake products right. as it actually is. And Amazon has not taken many great steps to improve that. Yeah, yeah. So the great American eclipse will help 
change the great American Amazon forgeries. Maybe. <gasps> oh man, did you uh, did you meet anybody interesting while you were out there? Um, we actually talked to quite a few people who had um, huge, ridiculous setups full of like telescopes uh-huh. and camera things. There was a guy who had the the rotating camera, the yeah, thing that tracks that the automatically sun. tracks it. Yeah, 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 that was super cool. Um, it they, didn't move enough during like the um, hour so, leading so up to they, it. Though they were um, they were they were tracking the the sun through the sky uh-huh. as it came by. Okay, so I, I I don't know how they had that set up. Of course, it was cloudy where they were, so they probably didn't, <laughs> didn't actually have any fun. Oh man, yeah, yeah, that's too bad. Oh, so we have neighbors across the highway who are from Spain. Yeah. Three guys from Spain. Although, they didn't come here just for this. They said they're doing all kinds of uh, road trips to a whole bunch of national parks around. Yeah. So they just kind of timed it. And and one of the guys, it's his birthday today. So that's a pretty pretty rad uh, birthday present from the yeah. universe. <laughs> and then we have uh, Linda and Linda from Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> Here we are, Scott and, and Ian. And, uh, That's exciting there. And a couple from uh, North Dakota. Um, I thought it was really funny when we were going down that the, like the the podcast that uh, that dude made me listen to about like techniques for taking pictures of the eclipse. Um, the guy who's hosting that podcast started every episode with, "Okay, when you go to the eclipse, don't take pictures of it." just watch it just be there for the experience but you know of course what are we doing we're trying to take pictures of <laughs> yeah. it and and it's like i know that my pictures with my 300 hundred dollar dslr are not going to turn out as well as most of the other well okay probably more, better than a, most of them but like not as good as as a lot of pictures that are going to be posted online yep. right but same as with these podcasts, I don't care. You still, I'm going to you make still something. You still try it for myself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I will say that um, you know, leading up to the event, everybody said stuff like that. Like, yeah, you should just watch it. Don't don't bother taking pictures. Somebody else is going to do it. Mm-hmm. I took some pictures, just a few. Yep, and they were cool, and that's my memory of them that I can look back on. But I remember, um, you know, we were watching it through the eclipse glasses, and then as soon as it reached totality, mm-hmm. took them off, and you could just see it. This black thing covering the sun where it was, and then just a ring, and then you could see the little aura thing. Yeah, super cool. I can still sort of visualize it, but I only stared at it for maybe like forty-five seconds before I started t- going into picture mode. Right, and it kind of sucks. But on the other hand, yeah, it's still kind of it's still pretty cool. So here's something that I want to address. I've heard some of my friends talking about like, yeah, I saw the eclipse from Minnesota. Like, it wasn't that impressive. Like, because it wasn't. Okay, you guys, if you weren't in the path of totality, you didn't actually see the eclipse. That's like, true. The real deal is right at that moment when you know the last one percent of the sun's surface is covered up by the moon, and then it goes and away. All of a sudden, like, yeah. So, um. A few years ago, there was a solar, or not a solar, a partial solar eclipse uh-huh. here where we could see. A few years ago, I think it was maybe when we were in high school. Okay. And so I, I don't remember that at all. Yeah, because it just didn't, nobody cared. Yeah. It's, it's a partial eclipse. It doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I walked up the hill, and I had a really crappy phone, and I tried to take a picture, and <laughs> you, you just can't see it. Nope. It doesn't, nope. there's nothing you can do about it. And so, like, eh, didn't look really anything special to me. Yeah. And I didn't have eclipse glasses. I didn't know that was a thing. But it was a partial eclipse, and so it would have been really cool to see then, I guess, maybe. Yeah. But uh, no, no chance of that. Now, to illustrate what I mean when I say that there is really no comparison between a partial eclipse and a total eclipse, here is the audio from the moments leading up to the total eclipse on through till after the total eclipse. And uh, if, you're, if you're worried about the fact that you can't see because this is a podcast and you won't know when the total eclipse is in the audio, uh, don't worry. You will definitely know. So we're about 10 minutes away from this total eclipse, and yeah, light is noticeably dimmer, but not in like a, like that's not all there is to it. It it seems kind of like, it seems a little bit differently colored, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I'm not sure if I can define what color it is. Yeah, no, but it's just, it just feels different. Um... One of our one of our neighbors here, um, who happened to park in the same area as us, uh, he was talking about um, how during a, an eclipse, 
many years ago that you know he like didn't know about it it wasn't really advertised because it was only like a you know 40 percent or 50 percent you know coverage um that he just kind of noticed that like things looked more vibrant so he took pictures of like some uh some flowers in his yard and and the pictures turned out like way way better than any that he had managed to take before so <laughs> it's a it's a really curious thing Exciting. It's getting so exciting. <laughs> okay, I would say at this point it has been worth everything so far. And we're not even at totality yet. Yeah. That everything is looking really dim. It's not even like not dim like it's a cloudy day either. It's like you're saying, it's kinda just the light is just yeah, weird. I mean this. I mean the grass didn't look this green before, did it? I don't think so. That's so weird. Funny. It's chilly out. Yeah, it's actually. It's, so the temperature is supposed to potentially drop. Could drop like 20 degrees or more, I think. Yeah. I'm, say. I'm putting on my sweatshirt. That, that breeze isn't helping any. That's for sure. It feels more purple. That's what it feels like. It feels purple. Okay. I think I agree with that. Yeah, it's really weird. It's like. There's, it's like there's sunlight, we still have shadows, but it's dim. Oh yeah, that's the other thing we're supposed to look at. Check the sharpness of your shadow as it's getting closer like now. Is it supposed to get sharper or less sharp? It gets sharper and then I think it gets less sharp or something. But yeah, at this point, it's the shadows are really sharp. What else are we supposed to remember to do? I don't know, you read the literature. <laughs> and I listened to the podcast and all that. Okay, we really just have a sliver now. I know. We're at, what time is it? 11.42. Oh, that's because we're almost there. That's why. <laughs> 11.42. We're almost there. And even with those as a sliver up there, we still can't look without the filters. Right. Which is so bizarre. It's not until complete and full tight totality. That tight totally. Please remain seated until the plane has come to a complete and full Stop. And the captain has turned off the seatbelt sign. Okay, it is getting suddenly darker now. We're almost, oh man, it is just going suddenly dark. Okay, looking through binoculars. We're almost there. Oh wow, it's starting to look like it's night. Yeah, it feels like dusk right now. Oh my God. It's like night, we're almost there. There it is, oh! check that out, wow. Yeah. Oh, take off the filter, dummy. <laughs> oh, that is wild. Wow, that is really cool. That is so cool. Wow, that is really awesome. Oh, we got this. Look at bright, the horizon. The horizon looks like sunset. Yeah, the it's all off in the horizon too. <laughs> oh my right. gosh. Okay, you've got to check this out with the binoculars, dude. Yeah. Check it out right now. That is cool, and we can see. I think that was going to be. Oh man. The wow. Corona. It's got like a really, really big arm coming down to the yeah. left and one big, kind of smaller one going off up to the right and an even narrower one going straight up. And oh my gosh. I'm, I'm not getting good pictures here, dude. I don't think my video is going to be very good either. But yeah, but the point is to look at it. I know. Okay, so we do have, I think it's Jupiter or Mars over to the, to the right. Where? Oh. oh, that's very interesting. I can't remember what, what, which one they said it was going to be. This is so wild. Do I need to open wow. up my aperture more? Probably, I kind of did. Um, wow, this is... The horizon just it looks like sunset, like a late sunset. Oh, there we go, there we go. Yeah! 
Oh great, now the camera battery went out, even though those are supposed to be fresh batteries. Oh, and now it's coming back, which means you gotta get the filters oh, back crap, on. Crap, 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 crap. Was that really two minutes? No, I don't think That so. was the fastest two minutes ever. Wow, okay, so now it's quickly coming, getting brighter well, again. Yeah, but I mean, if you look at it through the filter, that hardly any of it is back, you know? Yeah. But man, it looks like a bright light in the sky suddenly. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Oh, man. Okay, so. Where's, okay, where did those two filters go for this buddy, buddy boy? You looking? Hang on, nope. Wow, now it just looks like a really bright light in the sky. So check out <laughs> oh yeah, I was yeah. looking at that before. So the shadows are still pretty sharp again. <laughs> oh, that's wild. Well, that was the fastest two minutes ever. I know, the I know. The cars going by have their headlights on. <laughs> oh man, what that guy said in that podcast about like the eight second rule. Yeah. That it feels like eight seconds. I mean, it really did. Yeah, I wouldn't say eight seconds exactly, but wow. like that was that did not feel like two minutes. It really, man, that was cool. It just had a bright white glow around the black spot. <laughs> wow. Um, so twenty twenty four is that happening? I think that's happening. I'm thinking so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that let's was start so making cool. plans. I gotta check this out again. Here. I just, uh, you know, I really gotta live until twenty ninety nine when uh, when there's one that goes through the Twin Cities. Man, it's crazy how bright it is already. Yeah. It's just a sliver up there. And you can't even look up at it now. It's so... Yeah. We did it! We yeah, saw it! we did it! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hang on, do I have a signal out here? Can I tweet about it yet? Nope. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody gets to know. All right, so it's 12.30. And we just got on the road to go back down to Estes Park after seeing the uh, full, complete, total solar eclipse. So, okay, so let's debrief about that experience. Cause... Okay, so my experience in one word, mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> Do you have one word to, to describe the, the event? Surreal. <laughs> okay, that's a good word. So leading up to the eclipse, yeah, it, it got, like, dim, but not in, like, just a, like, I'm dimming the light in the kitchen kind of dim. Like, yeah. everything kind of got kind of a little bit purple tinted, I feel like. And off in the distance, where there was no shadow, it's still the regular light. Mm -hmm. So it just somehow looked... I uh, think it just kind of made it... That's part of what made the light so surreal. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you could summarize your experience with one word, what would it be? Eclipse. <laughs> I hate you so much, Ryan. <laughs> Isn't that the best word? Oh, man. <laughs> How about you? You yeah. pick a word. Uh, I picked uh, surreal. Okay. Yep. Uh, I don't pick and words that's... like that because that doesn't actually help anybody know anything. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, because then, then after I say surreal, then I start to explain why. Exactly. What that means. So, so you know. when I said eclipse, everybody gets it. <laughs> no, because you still have to like explain what that means. No, they can Whoops. just look it up. Oh, goodness. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why I don't play the one word game. <laughs> it doesn't work. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. What I noticed around us was uh, that the, there was like sunsets in all directions. Yeah, yeah. That freaked me out. Yeah. Because I'm used to seeing red on, like, one side of the sky as right. the sun is setting. But everywhere. seeing it everywhere, that was weird. And you kind of get the, the the blue, red, like, orange, purple. You uh -huh. kind of get that whole cascade of colors. And it was just everywhere. It was yeah. really neat. <gasps> you know what I should have done? I should have taken a photosphere during the eclipse. Oh, man, that would have taken that, forever. That would have taken forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you experience, like, kind of time not seeming like it was as long as it actually was? Because we finished, like, when, when our two minutes was up... Mm -hmm. uh, we all turned to each other and we were like, that felt like it was like 20, 30 seconds. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, and I, and I, you know, and, it, and some of that was because I was doing all the picture stuff. Yeah. And of course we have pictures that we'll, we'll put in the show notes. Right. Um, yep. You know, it's, it's, it's really cool to, to watch and it's really cool to take some pictures of it, but it's really just mostly cool to watch it. Yeah. Turns out oh, yeah. what they said was true. <laughs> um, 
So I'm going to see another one. Unless you have some really, really stinking good equipment. Which yeah. just means that I'm going to have to spend thousands of dollars on a bunch of photography equipment. On the other for, hand, for you know, like the picture that I got with my phone, my Galaxy S8 Plus by Samsung. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen to the uh, review of that on Second Opinion number 24. Yes, do that. Um, it was good enough for me to share with everybody I know. And they said, oh, that's pretty cool. I don't think you need a lot of equipment or anything. Mm-hmm. Just good enough equipment and then maybe some automation. You know what was some of the craziest pictures that I saw was a few people were in the right place at the right time to see the uh, the International Space yeah. Station transiting in front of the sun mm-hmm. during the partial eclipse. Yeah. And... So I, I think a, a, a NASA photographer captured it. The guy who does Smarter Every Day, the YouTube channel, yeah. captured it. Apparently, you had to be in rural Wyoming to see it. Oh, well, that's cool. But not the part of rural Wyoming where I was. Yeah, it turns out. Yeah. I think that's really interesting. You know, that's cool, but I don't know if it's, like, super cool. I mean, I think it's cool that they figured that out ahead of time and, that's, like, that's the cool traveled part. to the right place. But actually, place. looking at the image, it's just, like, blob on a big yellow thing. Well, you can clearly see the, the shape of the ISS. You can see an H on a big red thing. What did we notice when totality hit? Um, the ring of light around is the first thing that hit me. Yeah. So uh, I quickly ripped off all the filters and all the glasses so uh-huh. we could actually look at it. And we looked at it with the binoculars. Yeah, Without so filters. once you look at it with the binoculars, by the way, if you ever plan on going and seeing a complete solar eclipse, bring some nice binoculars with you. Yeah, because bring the telescope probably too, but yeah, yeah, binoculars are easier to hang on to it. And, um, here's a train. Because, because that's when you can really make out the corona. What really hit me was looking around and seeing, you know, they like, yeah, it looked like sunset, but it looked like sunset all the way around. Yeah, you know, exactly. no matter what direction you looked, the horizon was, the sky was red. Um, we could make out the mountains that were in the distance way better because uh, because there was a lot of contrast between the red behind them, behind them and yeah. the dark uh, mountains. Yeah. So, worth it? Seven years to the next one. <laughs> yep, we're definitely gonna go. Definitely. Uh, April what time? 8, April 8, 8, 2024. Okay. Hey, you know what? I might be on spring break during that time. Cool, I that, probably won't be. That'd be convenient. <laughs> we need to check what kind of a day of the week that is. All right. Um, yeah, shoot. This is so cool. That is so cool. Let's That's see so where cool. else there will be some in the world. We can go travel there, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, are we going to become eclipse chasers? We might. This is, this is the beginning. It, is, it has planted the seed. We got the itch. If there's anything that prompts me to get like better photography equipment, I guess this would be it. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. So, so Ryan, hi. Are you going to become an eclipse chaser because of this? Did it Probably. change your life? No, it didn't change my life even in the slightest. But I think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. And if, uh, you know, I have a job now and I have a passport again. Oh, yeah. So now I can go and uh, watch eclipses, I guess. Mm-hmm. Is that is that the plural? Eclipse. E- e- eclipse? No. no. Yeah, it's eclipses. Good. Yeah. So uh, I've heard that there's one in Argentina sometime in the next few years. Sure. The next one that everybody in the U.S. is talking about is 2024, which goes from, like, eastern Texas up through... The Ohio, east yep. or something, and then and then it goes up into Canada. Yeah, I could go to Canada. Canada is a nice place. Yeah, yeah. Also, could go somewhere local in the U.S. The one that I am hoping to live for is the one in 2099 that goes right through the Twin Cities. That that might be a while. Yeah, but um, you know, I have see. faith in our modern medical Medicine. tech and yeah, well, technology, and uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, I think it's if I did it again, and and I was more prepared. I would, like, arrive way earlier and leave way after. Mm-hmm. Doing the driving thing is really tough, and also driving to Argentina is somewhat unfeasible. Yeah. Um, I got I got lucky that, you know, I was on summer vacation. I didn't have to worry about, like, taking time off from work. Right. Um, the, the one in 2024 is April 8th. I uh, tweeted at SPPS to find out the when, of silence. when uh, spring break is that year, should but have, they uh, haven't gotten back to me yet. Should have tweeted at fake SPPS. Yeah. <laughs> Would have got a response instantly. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I, I would love to see another one. 
sooner rather than later, I guess. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, highly recommend. Great experience. Too great. Don't go ahead and see in that. It's already great. Bag. Don't have to make it greater. Or again. No, yeah. It's just great as it is. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh huh. That's right. So what what do you think? Like, what's the what's the biggest takeaway from the eclipse? Like, what does it mean for just the normal person? Like, is it relevant at all to a normal person? I think that the normal person, as a very discerning consumer, who spends money on experiences and not on material goods that will not ultimately make them happy, should do everything that they can to experience this like. Not once in a lifetime, but like once but in a very, it, it very... It could be effectively once in a lifetime. Right, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it has the same effect on your psychology as like being in space and looking down at the Earth and being like, oh my gosh, we're all just one people living on this tiny planet in the middle of space. We all got to work together. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it has that same effect, but... Uh... So, you know, I, I asked earlier, like, do we have numbers on things? And I, I don't think we have a lot of numbers, so... I would be interested in how many people traveled for it. I'd be interested mm -hmm. in how many people were estimated to have seen it and you know, stopped working or whatever. Google Maps should really release some data. Oh on man, that. that'd be so cool. That'd be really cool. Actually, um, there was a, a live traffic view of the U.S. Uh -huh. in that two-hour window yeah. that you could see, and traffic was red in the areas of totality path. Yeah. So you could see that at least. But if you had more granular numbers, that'd be really, really mm -hmm. interesting. You know, hopefully some of that stuff emerges. Um, Unfortunately, I believe what we'll find out is that it was fairly bleak. Uh, In terms of the number of people out there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. It, it seemed like a lot of people to me. It definitely stretched the so. infrastructure to its limits. Maybe in some places, but not everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a really cool thing, but, you know, totality is in such a narrow band that, you know, it's not like the whole U.S. could see it at once, right? No. Um, yeah. So it's not like you were all united in this one cool event at the same time. And, and furthermore, the whole world even wasn't, so... No. I did meet a few guys from Spain who happened to be in the U.S. at the time, and so they were like, well... Hey, we'll go see it. Yeah, why sure, not? Sure, why not? <laughs> Great American Eclipse. Can only see it in America. Now, what I thought of uh, was, how would you feel if you just happened to be traveling abroad away from the U.S. when the eclipse happens, and then you're like, oh, dang. I don't know. Like, I missed you, that opportunity. You probably know. I don't know. I mean, I didn't start hearing about this until a few months ago, you know? and um, Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I probably wouldn't mind. Like, if I was already traveling somewhere interesting mm -hmm. and, and I didn't live in, in totality already, I probably wouldn't mind. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you'd still have to travel to yeah. to Kansas or Missouri or whoop, somewhere. Yeah. I found it well worth it. So thanks for listening to this Nexus special, everybody. Um, once again, find the show notes for this episode with uh, links to articles that we talked about on the nexus.tv slash ns54 if you would like to give us feedback on this episode um, go to your email client and email the nexus tv at gmail.com or go to your favorite twitter client and find us on twitter as the nexus tv and if you have any pictures from your Eclipse experience, feel free to share them on Twitter with us. Yeah, yeah. And we might retweet them. Mm -hmm. Probably will, actually. Definitely. We don't get very many people tweeting at us. Please so. do. <laughs> uh, I have been Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. And I am Ryan Rampersad. And you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter and Ryanamar. And of course, on my website, ryanrampersad.com. And unfortunately, my friend Scott Cop is like very, very hidden online. So I, I can't tell you where he is. Have a good one, everybody. Have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence. Tech news is dominated by big announcements with big bombastic personalities. Developers, 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 developers. 
Sometimes they make us laugh. Yes, I'd like to order 4,000 lattes to go, please. Sometimes we laugh at them. Courage. Sometimes we're filled with awe. There it is. Whoa! Check that out. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes they throw shade. Toxic hell stew. Sometimes they inspire. Live, learn, and love. They never want us to forget. Remember. That the show's never over because. I got one more thing. Now, it's often difficult to make the journey to see these events live. This is a freaking dirt road! Oh my god! <laughs> but we here at the Nexus TV have got you covered. On our show, Nexus Special, we recap and analyze all the biggest announcements and keynote events in the tech world. So come join us as we explore the brave new worlds that await us. Subscribe to Nexus Special in your favorite podcast player today.